Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. One of the questions that I get most often is what I'm thinking about when I'm soloing. And it's a difficult question to really answer because I'm, I'm probably thinking a lot less than most people would imagine. Even though if you're, if you're improvising over something like a jazz standard, then there are actually a lot of things that you have to be aware of. But I think that's the key thing here. I'm, I'm aware of them, but I'm not really thinking about them. It's kind of similar to driving a car. It's like you, you know that you have to turn the steering wheel if you want to go left. And you also know that you have to turn on the lights to let everybody else know that you want to go left, but you don't actually think about it when you're doing it. Uh, so to try and talk a little bit about this and then give you some sort of idea about what is going on, then I played sort of a simple one chorus solo on a jazz standard. I transcribed it. And then I'm going to take at least bits and pieces. We're going to see how it works. This is a bit of an experiment uh, and I don't want to make the video all too long, but I'm going to take some bits and pieces of that and then analyze it. And hopefully it's, that's going to give you some ideas about how I'm thinking and also how sometimes I'm, I'm really not thinking. There's a lot of stuff in a transcription like that, that I don't really know what's going on. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, improve the way that you solo, check out some interesting arpeggios or chord voicings, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. The song that I'm doing is really just a straightforward uh, jazz standard. It's uh, out of nowhere in G major. I'm just playing the one chorus uh, and actually it's the first take and then I added some comping. I'm not really trying to do anything. I'm doing some things that are sort of typical for this tempo. So there's a little bit of double time. There's some triplet things. Uh, and also when it's medium swing, there's a little bit more blues because that just somehow like the song kind of asks for it if you play it like this. Uh, but Let's just check out the solo. The first few phrases in the solo are pretty much just there to sort of state what's happening. So uh, you want to be clear about what the key is, what the chords are, uh, where the where the meter is, where the one is, stuff like that. And that's also, I think, really what I'm doing uh, with those phrases. So I really just start on the one with just playing the chord. I mean, that's that's very clear. Like okay, here's here's the one, and here's the tonic chord, and then the phrase that follows it. Is kind of coming out of a G major triad and a, a B minor triad, so the, the tonic triad and the uh, triad from the third of that chord. I'm not really thinking about any of those triads. I think that's just stuff that's in there. The best thing you can describe as what I'm thinking is just this chord. And uh, and again, I'm not really really thinking too much about exactly what, what chord it is. I have all these options and then I just start playing and see and, and then we see what kind of happens. I think it's that's a little bit how that feels. The thing that I'm probably taking care of is, is that of course I'm playing just the sound of the chord first and then out of nowhere uses E flat 7 or the B flat minor E flat 7 really a lot and the whole song is a little bit or the whole chord is a little bit about how that works in the key of G major. The second two chords in the song R, B flat minor, E flat 7. So I'm already thinking about that I want to go there and I'm also probably starting to aim towards some sort of chord tone on the B flat minor. That's at least what I'm doing in the solo. I'm also, there's like a clear transition onto the uh, to the B flat minor, just really aiming for that F. And that's how I would play a change like that. Um, so even if I'm not playing the same as what, what's in the solo, So it's really just about finding, now I'm aiming for the root. You can use the root here because this is such a, it's a change that's so far away that it doesn't really matter what you're doing, whatever you're playing. If you hit the uh, chord tone on the one, you're connecting with the chord. It's kind of what you want to do in the beginning of the solo. On the B flat minor, E flat seven. Um, so the first phrase is, is really just coming out of, well, you can kind of think of it as being a B 
B flat minor nine. Probably the way I would think about it is like uh, there's something that's B flat scale something, and then uh, a D flat major seven picture. That's that's something I use really a lot. So the arpeggio from the third, and then that moves into another phrase. This on the E flat seven, which is kind of like I mean B flat minor E flat seven is is a two five one in A flat, and this is actually just. Like an A flat blues phrase, but it works kind of well, okay to have that. And I'm uh, getting out of it by just also getting the G in there so we can still connect to the E flat 7. And then from there, I move back to G major, that's the uh, bar 5, uh, adding the chord. And then in bar 6, there's a chord that I play very often, I'm not sure if it's, it's not originally there, but I really like to play the C7 to take us to B minor. And that fits with the melody as well, so that's one of the reasons why I do that quite often. Uh, I get there by adding a leading chord, because I'm first just sustaining the A on the G major, and then leading chord up to the C7. And then the melody on the C7 is really just a simple sort of G minor melody. You can kind of, whenever you play like a one chord to a four dominant, and usually when you do that in a major key, then that's actually just to take you to the third degree. That's a very common chord progression to have. Then you can play it as if you're playing first G major and then G minor. That's probably also a little bit what I'm doing here, even though I'm not really playing, like you can do that in a, in a really clear way where you're playing something like and really sort of framing the movement from B to B flat, and then that will work. that. Um, I'm not doing that here, but I am still clearly playing something that's G minor on top of the C7. Um, the C7 move to the to the B minor 7. So the B minor 7 is kind of like a third degree minor chord, uh, which means that I'm not in this case playing the 9 on it. And um, I'm really just playing B flat, uh, sorry, B minor pentatonic. And moving on to E7. So the, I'm coming out on the A on the 1 of the E7 and then sliding it down to go to the sharp 9, so it's sort of like an E7 altered. Like this, and that's just really sort of F minor phrase on top of this one. But again, to me when I'm playing the E7, I'm, I'm thinking E7, I'm not thinking F minor. You kind of need to practice your also dominance so that that, that when you play something like that, that you don't have to sort of switch in between thinking E7, F minor, and then resolving that to A minor. Also because it's, um, at least for me, it's very much like I, I want to understand things the way that I hear them. And I don't really hear F minor to A minor. I hear E7 to A minor. So I want to think about it as being an E7. And I think that's that's also what I'm doing, even though the phrase is very clearly like F minor. But you, you still want to think, for me at least, it makes much more sense to really just think the chords that I'm hearing and not other chords. It, it doesn't work for me to do stuff like Pat Martino where everything seems to become some sort of Dorian minor on all chords. That's just, that doesn't really sit well with the way that I play. In the next eight bars, you can see that uh, the way that I'm treating, because we have this cadence, the B minor, E flat 7 to to the two chord, but I, I'm treating it as a tonic minor chord, so I'm playing an A minor 6, and that's also the sound that I'm using, is then uh, melodic minor, so you have the... And then I'm, you have the A minor 6, and then you have a bar of B half means E7, back to A minor. I'm kind of ignoring... Um, I'm kind of ignoring the, the it's, it's open for debate, but I don't think I'm really thinking the B half to many. I think I'm just playing A minor and then E7 and then back to A minor, even in this tempo. Uh, and you can also see that the A minor actually gets a lot more room than the E7. So I'm playing, I think the way that I would see the line, I, I would say that this is all, so um, up till here, which is in the middle of the bar, this is all A minor 6. And then I move to the E7. And actually the E7 is then kind of moving into the A minor bar. 
Uh, and then here, first I make it an A minus seven, and then turning it into an A minor six. So it's almost like playing an A minor D seven here. Going to E flat seven. And here, of course, this E flat seven, both in the melody in the song and, and also the way that I'm playing it, uh, this is a Lydian dominant. And uh, that really gets gets an emphasis with the A in, in the second bar of the E flat seven. And then for the rest, I mean, the Lydian dominant sound is, of course, just a B flat minor melodic mode. So the lines that, that I play on that are also, even though, again, I'm still just thinking. Uh, e flat seven, the the melodies are pretty. Uh, e flat minor, uh, sorry, uh, B flat minor melodic. That, that's really what's happening there. Then we get the A minor. I'm actually really coming out on the root here, and then we get a double time line. This is something I play more often, and it's also something that. Um, that, that I kind of like to do with, first we get this insertion of the third, so... Uh, and then I'm kind of just moving up through the scale in uh, in false. So first a C, and then moving up to an F sharp diminished, and then repeating uh, the, the third in each of the chords. And then from there, just uh, adding sort of a chromatic passing note. And really, here's where I, I'm kind of resolving this a little bit early, so I'm re resolving already on the three. And you'll see, like, that I think that's also a good image of how I'm, I'm not really thinking too much when, I, when I'm playing. So sometimes I just let the melody rule and I'll be playing stuff where if I want to resolve something later or earlier, then I will do that. Uh, and I'll leave it, uh, I'll let the melody rule that and then I'll get that to sit in the chords in, in that way. And I, it's not something that I'm I'm really that aware of when I'm doing it. And I think this is a really good example of it because normally that would be a place where I would either go to an altered line or I would then resolve it. And here I'm resolving it even though it's in the middle of the bar. So actually I'm going to G major uh, with this phrase already on bar three. But of course the way that, that this is played, because th this is the beginning of a blues phrase, so... And um, a medium tempo song in, in this kind of feel, in medium swing, kind of asks for, for some, some blues as well. It's just one of those things that you can sort of throw in there as a sound that will work really well. And that's also what's kind of happening here. And playing blues is also something that that you would just sort of throw on top of all the other chords. You'll see another example later uh, of, of, do, of me doing that. And uh, that means that I'm not really too concerned with the changes. But whenever I start to play blues, then I'm just playing blues on top of whatever is happening. And then I'll return to the chords later. And that's also a little bit what's going on here. So I'm resolving here and coming out on the three with this. But really, that's just blues phrasing. And I will sometimes use blues as sort of an also dominant sound because on top of a G major seven, of course, then it, it has a certain tension, it's a certain sound, and it, it's something you can resolve back into the normal sound of the chord. The reason that I can keep on publishing videos every week is that I have a community of people that are supporting the channel over on Patreon. I'm very grateful for their support, and I don't think it would be possible for me to keep on making all these very specific jazz guitar videos without their help. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. If you join us over on Patreon, I can also give you something in return for your support. I'm coming out in the second half with the blues phrase, and then I kind of turn that into a motif. And then we get a motif. So at first I just played on, on, on the G major. And then I take that same melodic idea and then I move it to B flat minor. And then to E flat seven. And, oh, sorry. And then moving up to F sharp. So really, when I'm working with motifs like that, this is something that I just practice moving motifs around. 
in this case it's it's really sort of basic and really simple because everything is like uh, staying it's it's quite clearly the same type of melody and it's more about like imitating the direction of the melody and still playing something that makes sense on the chord that's something you just sort of practice without having you can't move these things around note for note nobody has time to think about stuff like that so um, so in that way there's no room for, for doing this with voice leading you get different melodies if you do that and um, and that that's I think that's all the thinking that's done with that it's like I just hear something that, that I think okay that's a that's something I feel like repeating sometimes that will happen in solos and then I'll just stick with that and try to move it to the next chord and most of the time that works like this uh, and sometimes it goes horribly wrong and then you end up with a completely different phrase that you then have to, you can work with. I think that's, that's also a little bit how it is to improvise. Sometimes it doesn't go the way you want it to. Um, so I'm coming out on the F sharp on the G major seven, so that's just the seventh, a very clear note because it doesn't fit on the E flat seven, so you can really just hear now we're back. And then the phrase that I get on the G minor, uh, sorry, G major seven and this, the C seven that I'm playing again here is really just, well, first just B minor pentatonic, which is of course just the pentatonic scale from the third. I, I use that really a lot on major seven chords. Um, and then going up on the 13 on the C7, adding the chord, resolving the chord. Uh, and then in this instance, I'm playing the B minor seven, but I, now I'm changing it a little bit because I'm starting to play it as a, as a nine chord. So now I'm... It's more like treating it as if it's a 2-5 in that way. It's not because I'm really clear about it. I could have played something that would sort of really spill out that sound. But I'm just using the C-sharp, really. That, that's sort of the main thing, which normally isn't in the key, obviously. So in that way, it's, it's a different sound. And then we get sort of a longer um, pentatonic phrase. There's not too much happening. Again, it's just uh, going up to, to an E7, and it's an E7 altered resolving that and then I'm actually re resolving it down to the to this low D on the A minor and in this case on the A minor I'm going into sort of a triplet idea so this is probably something where I'm thinking more about obviously thinking more about the rhythm and the effect that you can have there than what I'm playing in terms of the notes because the notes are really simple so this triplet idea takes up the first two bars of, uh, of this part of the form so the A minor 6 to the B half diminished um, maybe one thing that's also worth noticing is that if you just, I guess if you just think in, think in groups of two with the triplets, then you would get like get something where I would start with a group of two right on the one. And here I'm actually not doing that. I have a note before that, and then I go into the group of two. So it's also shifted a little bit on top of it, just to make it unclear and just to create some rhythmical tension, really. And then I'm somehow kind of resolving that on the E7. Uh, but then returning to it in the third bar, so again when I'm back on A minor six, so so that's also kind of a triplet rhythm. Moving to the four minor chords of the F seven here, or uh, back to dominant, and that's really just centered around the important note is the E flat. So that's also what I'm playing, and everything I'm playing is just C D and E flat, and then a trill with that. But that also really brings out that note quite well. So. And then we get to the final part of the song, which is first this like three flat three diminished A minor to D seven, and uh, I'm spilling out some of the chords, and then I'm moving into blues again. So first we get uh, sort of fairly clear B minor, and to me it's a little bit like I'm playing the, the diminished chord. This is after the fact, I'm, I mean, again, it's like the kind of thing where I don't really know, but I think I'm playing actually this as part of the B flat minor, even though that's technically on the B minor seven. And for the rest, it's just really B flat minor, uh, sorry, B flat diminished arpeggio. And then that note works really well on the A minor as well, so I just repeat it. And then from here on the D7, it goes back into something. You could argue that maybe this is like a D7 also, but really I think it's just blues that I'm thinking. And I think maybe it's also just because I've listened really a lot to Joe Pass 
when he's playing medium. And one of the things I really love about his playing is when he's using uh, a lot of blues. Also, like another uh, favorite of mine when it comes to medium swing is Oscar Peterson. Again, this is somebody who plays a lot of blues for those kind of tempos. So that's also kind of what I'm doing here. And then it's a little bit less uh, reharmonization and a little bit less fancy scale choices and sounds in that way. Because it's a medium swing standard, it's, it's not inner urge in tempo 250. So so there are, you're going to do different things with it. And that's that's also what's happening here. Uh, so we have the B flat on the, on the D7. And then from there, like the whole turnaround is really, really just. Uh, like a blues phrase and then with a major thing at the end here, major scale thing at the end, ending on the ninth of the, uh, of the key. So as you can see, I'm not really thinking a whole lot. It's not something that I'm, I'm really conscious about what arpeggios I'm playing and stuff like that. Uh, and a lot of it is really just coming from playing a lot. Of course, I practiced a lot writing lines and, and I also practiced a lot just improvising. And that means that in that way, I get it into my system so I don't have to think about it. If you want to check out a video where I talk about some of the different ways and some of the things you want to be aware of if you want to study jazz, then check out this video called The 10 Commandments of Learning Jazz Guitar. If this is the first time you see one of my videos and you want to learn more about jazz guitar, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. And that's about it for this week. Thank you for watching and until next week.